This month, so we're going to go through a work session like we did in the past because uh, we have a lot of things going on right now. So I'm going to open up the public participation. There's nobody in the public, so that will end public participation. <laughs> Mayor, what do you have? Um, I just have a couple things. So I just want to say that uh, we had an aggressive driving grant for the month of March. And we wrote, we had actually 285 traffic stops and issued 195 tickets. And most of those tickets were issued on Ratcliffe Street, Route 13, and for stop sign violations. So I think the word's getting out that our men are out there on the streets, they're patrolling, they're making their presence known, and we're trying to change the aggressive driving habits of people so that they're more um, aware of their surroundings and make it a safer environment for the residents. I also wanted to let everybody know, if you haven't seen, we have a brand new animal control vehicle that's in service. It's like the Mercedes of animal control vehicles. Oh. <laughs> um, we have a new patrol explorer that's out there, and we have a black unmarked explorer that's going to be on the streets. And then uh, new to Bristol Borough, we have a brand new F-150 which is like the talk of the town. Uh, we have a pickup truck that's uh, labeled and on the streets for our officers. The only other thing I have is that we have a new state county grants that started today through uh, June 4th. And this is going to be focused primarily on pedestrian safety, occupant safety, and click it or ticket. So we're actually gonna have some uh, plain clothes police officers and crosswalks and things of that nature. So if you're approaching a crosswalk with a pedestrian, my advice would be to stop. You know, it's it's the law to stop when people are in the crosswalks. And we're just trying to make the town safer, especially with all the new foot traffic and events and activities that are going to be happening throughout the warmer months. So we're just trying to make people aware of their surroundings. Um, oh, I do have one more thing. I just want to publicly welcome back Officer Dean Johnson who I got the pleasure to talk to before the meeting. Um, he was injured for a while and out of duty. And I just want to publicly welcome Mr. Johnson back to the force. It's good to see him in uniform again. That's it. Any questions for the mayor? Chief? Uh, I think he just covered it all. Just really basically, we're going to be out there again for the grant all the way through June. And uh, like the mayor said, pay attention to the crosswalks, the stop signs, and your speed. Other than that, uh, thank you. You guys have seen all the vehicles out there. Thank you very much. For the chief. Lorraine, what do you have? First of all, I'd like to talk about the uh, school play. The school play this year was <clears throat> phenomenal. Um, I just want to congratulate Danny DeLuca for a job well done. We went four years without a production uh, at the school and the costumes, the, the sets, the amount of kids that were involved, it was unbelievable. And our town came out to, uh, like there was a, I think they had between 750 and 1,000 people show up <coughs> to the, maybe more, maybe more than 750, but for sure it was at least 750. Uh, the crowd was quiet. I mean, it, it couldn't have gone any better than it did, and um, I really am uh, proud of the school, proud of our school for this, and proud of Danny DeLuca for bringing it back. Uh, I think we should have a lot of 
good productions from here on out. Uh, also, I want to talk about, uh, we hired a few inspectors. And people are going to be told that, you know, they have to clean up leaves or they have to clean up trash or they have to remove uh, furniture from in front of their garages. Uh, just little things are going to be, t you're going to be told. And instead of arguing with the inspector, you know, if you have a problem getting rid of something, call the borough, say I need a couple more days or whatever. But um, please try to, let's clean this town up. The thing is, we went through COVID. We were very lax. We didn't have the help we needed. We couldn't be out there. And now we're out there, and we're going to clean this town up. And um, I want to thank everybody that's doing the work to clean this town up, especially Maria Figueroa. Thank you, Maria. And that's all I have. Right. Um, <clears throat> With the, the point of, I know we, we hired some inspectors, I was looking at the inspection reports for, for March, and I was not taken back, I guess. I, I know how busy they are, but we did 203 inspections of, it looks like, just like rental units and, and housing units. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dillon, if I'm reading that incorrectly. Um, and... I guess the question I have, and then we had we issued seven summonses or citations for code enforcement. So I think the question I had is with the allocation of these new inspectors, is there anything that we as borough council can do to to um, help alleviate um, the burden of 203 inspections do, compared to seven citations for code enforcement? Um, are we going to send these new guys out to really kind of focus on code enforcement. Um, I know we, we, in years gone by, we had switched um, to bi-annual right, inspections. Has that added a burden to that inspection department? Um, By going to the two-year, it decreased the burden. Right. right. We're now ready to go back to one-year inspection of rentals if council so wants. OK. And, and is that something that you think should happen? I, I would recommend it. Yeah, year. absolutely. So, yourself, you're up to be ready to sure. take that Yeah, no, I understand. Right, and, right now, uh, I think we've got rid of 40 some junk cars yep. in the last uh, month or so. Mr. Miller's had a part time inspector, full time inspector, actually, we're all each three now. Doing a great job. Over the next few months, each and every street and now in town and uh, addressing any more code. Gotcha. And my so my my only concern is that when we go to um, annual inspections, that we're going to pull one of those guys and have them do exactly what John did in the month of, of that, March. That may not be John. John's doing right now. I think John and Ray mm -hmm. are doing rental inspections, mm -hmm. and Eric is doing nuisance calls, nuisance violations. But all three, if they're out and see something, they're handling it. But like Jim said, I think we definitely come January 1st, go back to yearly rental inspections. Which is fine. I, I'm not, and it's a need. It's absolutely something that is needed. Um, I, I, I'm just concerned because I don't think we're, we're enforcing our codes strongly enough. And I, do, I just think it's a manpower issue. I don't think it's anyone that's saying, I refuse to enforce that or I'm not looking at that. I just don't think they have the time. So uh, my concern is that we just hire two more people, we go back to annual inspections, and then we take one of those people and probably really occupy all their time. So it's just something I still want to keep on the radar is that code enforcement has got to be a priority. But I, I think, I truly I think believe that. it's getting done. I think the pandemic made us fall behind. Sure. And, and a lot of the places are worse than ever because of it. And I think we need to go back to yearly inspections. We gotta and get, I think that's one of the reasons we really wanted to bring those to us. We, we need to get caught up. So, next six months or so, we have everything we went through one time. Yep. And we make a decision after the summer 
that if we're going to go back to yearly inspections, yep. we start. <clears throat> but it will it will take manpower. And if we got to hire. That's why we hire well. people mm -hmm. to get to do that. Right, but that's not the only thing we hired them to do. We we didn't just hire them to do biannual inspections, right? But it's we're, a big important part. Without right? a doubt, without a doubt, I I don't disagree. But we're not just looking at smoke alarms, right? I mean, that's oh, yeah. it's entirely important. But that ends up being a big part of the job, right? Is going in there, making sure people smoke alarms. It's safety, without a doubt. It is important. Um, but I, but as a byproduct, code enforcement seems to go by the wayside. There are two different things, as far as I'm concerned, right? Is a rental inspection is not code enforcement. That's not what how I view it. But sometimes I, they fall behind and people let them go and then they become worse than ever. I mean, I there's a know. house on Bath Street that's no longer a house because they were trying to fix it. And I don't know what happened, but there's nothing there now. Yeah. Nothing. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. What code enforcement, like when they go out to do a rental inspection, they have a property maintenance code. Yep. They check for more than just smoke detectors. Yes. They check the property, they make sure, sure you know. But, I mean, that same person could put... But you can't go inspect our heater because you're not, it's, it's not part of the inspection. That's, no inspection would cover, it's if you sell your home, then they have a heater sir, chimney sir, roofs, all them type of inspections. We can do what we want to do, or we could talk about, well, we want to add some things and change the ordinance or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they don't. They have a list. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. That they only can do. Yeah, they basically do a safety inspection, and then they, we require certs for the heater, for the electrical box, and for the chimney. Uh, so that's on inspections. We do the residential rental. We do commercial. One thing we do not, cannot do, are regular inspections of homes. Mm -hmm. That's where the code enforcement comes in. Right. Somebody has a fence that's falling down. Okay, that's not going to come up on a regular inspection because we don't have it. Right. So that's where somebody's got to look at it and say, your fence has been down, you have a pool, it needs to go back up, or you got three, three abandoned vehicles. So that's where the, the code enforcement comes in, where people just have to ride around and see. And that's what I'm saying, is that I'm saying that when we've got three people that are doing safety inspections, the, build, the fences that are falling down are going to get neglected. And so that's my point. It's not at all, I, I agree with everyone that the annual inspections need to happen. That's an issue. But I think we've lost sight a little bit of that that's not the only job of the inspection department. We need code enforcement. And we need people that are just out on the street seeing these fences and seeing people, you know, paint their facades in crazy different colors. And it shouldn't be just because you're a landlord that you get picked on. Sure, I agree. It should be everybody should start cleaning up their property. Yeah. And right. it gives the quality of life for the people that have to rent. Okay. Without a doubt. I, I um, Greg, I feel like right now the they're, they're amping up. It's amping up. And, I, and I've been involved. I've had phone calls to me. And, and I just want you to know that they're doing a lot, a lot more than they've ever done, especially this part-time, oh, sorry, part-time is unbelievable right now with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that the, the full-time guy can not always go out on inspections as well. I mean, we just hired two people. Let's give them a chance to prove it. I think, I think they're doing a heck of a job. I really do. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm not saying that they're doing... No, 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 no. I know you're not. I'm just saying I think okay. we might be a little overwhelmed. If we are, we'll we're hire get, somebody else. We're going to get caught up. And if we have to hire more... We'll right. hire more. Lily? I have to agree with Greg. Mm -hmm. By changing this to an annual inspection, doesn't doesn't really solve the problem. Because some of our problems in town are people that own their own homes and they treat it like... Like it's a pigsty, and it's our own home. Mm -hmm. And if we don't address that, then it affects the whole neighborhood. And the other issue is we've got people doing work in town. They sneak in on the weekends and work without permits. You're right. And sometimes they get caught. Sometimes, you know, they don't. I know that they've got an inspector scheduled to work on some Saturdays because that's a good idea. Because you can see it there. And, and the problem is. 
even when people don't want to get, you know, everybody thinks because they don't get a permit, oh, they, they, they save some, they save something. A homeowner, if a guy comes in and works on your house, doesn't get a permit, he works on your house, so you don't know whether he has insurance or not, if one of his workers falls off your roof and gets impaled on your fence, and then you find out this guy doesn't have insurance. Do you know who, the, the, who they're going to go after? Sure. The homeowner. Sure. So really, the borough is protecting our own residents by making people get permits. Even if we want to waive the fee, people should still have to come in and prove that they have a license, that they've got a PA license to work on, as a contractor, and, and it's protecting them. And I think that's going to take more time for our building inspector too. Mm -hmm. So just going out and doing rental inspections, I, you know, well, I, it brings I, in a little more revenue, but I don't think it's, I, I don't I think, think that they're doing more than, I mean, don't forget, they like are. Lorraine said, they're only here a month, not even. Yes, One guy's they only They are here. doing a lot because no, I got, saying not, nobody's saying they're not doing it. We're trying to say that we, we can't just focus on we're rental not, inspectors. We're not. Well, they are, if we only get, if you only had seven citations, and you did 200 inspections. They won't be, wait a second. Were citations meaning that they had to pay for something that they didn't do? No, some of them didn't have to pay. Oh, actually. A violation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Citation that Here's the thing. We, we're giving people time to do their thing. If they don't do it, then it gets. The paid. only the only way they get a the only way they get a citation is when they come out and they say you have 10 days to do something. Right. And right. you don't do it within 10 days, then you get cited. That's right. So right. they may have did 200 inspections, and they could have been, you need a battery and a smoke detector, you need to cut your grass, no. and everything was they cooperated with, because they follow up yeah. on that 7 or 10, whatever the, the time frame is. So we're talking about all different things. We're talking about contractors working without permits. We're talking about 200 inspections, rental inspections with only seven citations, which means they all could have been very easy inspections and they only said to cite seven people. I don't know, we He's can get John. These are, so they, they differentiate inspections and code enforcement summonses. So there were seven code enforcement summonses and over 203 rental inspections. And I'm not saying that anyone is doing anything wrong. I'm, no, saying, I'm not saying that. We're kind of our priorities seem to be really weighed in one direction when there's other things that we should. Let me just say this: the summonses were just the ones that were issued mm -hmm. at the JP's court because people have not cooperated with yeah. her. So that's taken it up to the next level. Yeah. So we're out there sending notices, okay. making phone calls. We make phone calls to some people, yeah. and we're sending emails because we know who the property mm -hmm. owners are. We're saying, we're going to give you three days to clean no, it up. That's a good so, so we're getting a lot done, in my opinion, and I'd like to bring Mr. Miller in at your next work session, mm -hmm. and we have a more thorough discussion. Your full-time inspector has just finished his training mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, uh, of how to handle procedures here in the borough. So mm -hmm. he just finished about a week ago. Mm -hmm. So he's now on his own out there. And he's doing a great job. We have three new big three new record of um, when they make contact. Yes. Like, yes. Like, okay, so I mean is that in this report or no, no. Okay, so I mean not, that's not in the report. I got this is just a sum. These are the people that we've had to take down to the JP because they haven't cooperated. I gotcha. Um, it would be not so we, we take record of all 203 inspections. Um, you know, I, it just might be informative if we know how often good. we're at least talking to people about code enforcement as well. So I, you know, that's. I think that we need, and there's there's so much going on within the inspection departments mm -hmm. okay. that we really need to sit down. I say give these guys a couple yes. months. Sure. I agree. They all got their own vehicle. John's going to make a recommendation. Do we need another part-time inspector to get caught up on? Because right. I think Betty said from COVID, we're still behind. Without a doubt. Very behind. And we need to get everything caught up and moving forward. But like Louis said, people working without permits yep. is a major issue yes, in it town. Is. Yes, and it is. people doing work 
that are saying they're doing a $50,000 job yes. and they're putting $5,000 down on the right. permit. Right. So, or the homeowners pulling the permit, and I've been saying for years, like Louie just said, the homeowner's responsible. Without doubt. If you pull that permit and your electrician burns your house down or a roofer falls or some, something happens, you're the contractor. So it makes no sense for a homeowner to pull a permit or to lie on a permit. What are you really saving yeah, by trying to, you're trying to beat the bar out of a few dollars? So. And also, uh, the amount of cars that they uh, cited as well, like gotten out of town, because we had a lot of cars on our streets that don't belong here, you know? And I think it's been, I ran, been when I first ran, I ran to build an inspection department. Yes. So and it's that. my, I will never, it, it'll continue. I got you. COVID okay. put us behind. I so. got you. Um, just the other, last two things I want to discuss um, is uh, I want to thank Mr. Dillon and the inspection department for um, signing the Schuster uh, Gateway. I know I get a lot of comments about it. It's, it's a big thing, and we are actively in uh, conversation with them about fixing that, uh, the entranceway into Simon & Schuster. It looks terrible, and it also looks unsafe, and, and we are in contact with them. And then the last and thing. We have cited them, so yes. we're going to the next level. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, the last thing I want to say is <clears throat> on uh, Wednesday, I think Lorraine will be able to make it. We had to change our, our will, meeting. I'll be there. On Wednesday, we're going to meet at Riverfront North behind um, the um, Riverview development um, just to discuss that Riverfront area. It's not in disrepair. It doesn't look terrible, but it's a beautiful, you know, riverfront area that I um, that I think could be beautified. And um, we're going to talk to the uh, association about that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Well, where the new homes are now, mm -hmm. that whole area has been redone. Right. Yes. So that's because uh, they're supposed to be putting benches in. Yeah, right. That's what we're because Paul Goslin every day he stops me. He wants his bench so he yep. can sit. I tell him they're coming. Yeah. So, but I don't see. I was back though. I don't see anything wrong in that. No, area. no. I'm just saying, so, like benches, benches. But they're benches. ordered. The yeah. benches are ordered. Yeah. Brian. All right, Brian. What do you got? Right. <laughs> uh, I just want to talk about um, recreation basketball. It came to an end um, on the third of April. Um, it was 220 kids and about 15 volunteers and we were able to make it happen. We just want to say thank you to all the volunteers and the kids for joining the program. Um, we have flag football. Uh, the registration is out. It started April 16th. Um, and that will start in June, so we look forward to seeing everyone out there. Thank, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Good job. Any questions for Brian or the rec program? Thanks, Brian. Maria? Um, I would actually like to say that I'm happy to say that the April 15th cleanup was a success. Um, we did lose a lot of uh, people due to the uh, opening day for the kids, um, and also because of the protected uh, weather. Um, I want to say about like 50% of the volunteers um, were out of town. We had approximately 35 in total, 10 of which were Amtrak employees. Um, so I, I would like to thank everyone that came out um, and helped and, and worked and and sweated because <laughs> it was hot that day. Um, I also want to give a, a special thanks to our state rep, Dino uh, Davis, for coming uh, and stopping by. Uh, the three uh, students who uh, did community service, uh, and uh, Aiden, Gus, and Jason, um, and Mr. Lou <laughs> and his wife, they did an awesome job. Um, they attacked, they went and tackled, what area was it? Is it Jefferson? Jefferson, Pittsburgh. And they were there for hours and they did.
did an awesome job. Um, so thank you. Um, and I also would like to thank the uh, public work guys uh, for <laughs> constantly riding around and picking up the hundreds of trash that we ended up uh, filling the bags. Um, and to uh, Amtrak and all their employees for all their hard work. Um, Jose, um, I, I would like to thank him for his help and guidance and helping me put it together. So I do have a little slide, some pictures of before and during that I would like to share. This is uh, before, this is before, this is also before, this is all before. So if you go to these areas, um, Race Street, uh, Pines, um, all along the track, you'll see a huge difference. This is on uh, Ray Street. This is uh, after Amtrak came and knocked uh, cut down a lot of the uh, overgrowth. There was the uh, trash. So, I mean, we found all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I don't even want to think about the stuff that we, we found. But these were a lot of the areas that we, you know, we did hit. That looks nice. And this is uh, the Amtrak crew. And then this is where we were at uh, Spruce and Headley. And if you could see off to the corner, all the trash bags. Um, and that was basically the second time around that uh, we had the trash. And this is on uh, Ray Street. And this is uh, at uh, Headley Street, the park area behind the Golden Eagle. We cleaned up and got a lot of trash from there. So everybody was all, you know, we were all, and then these were, this is the Amtrak guys, and this is the borough. Oh goodness. With all the trash that we collected. So, and that's it. Thank you. Any other questions for Maurice? <laughs> Lily, what do you have? Um, my issues this month have been a couple, a couple projects where the people are working without permits, and even though, you know, and the borough's been on top of them. Some people just, just disregard what's going on, and they, they, they want to, they want to fight tooth and nail not to do it the right way, and they're going to find out that it's not the way to do things in the borough. Um, one in particular, is, is I met the people in because they had to go to Harb and they didn't realize they needed a permit. And actually, uh, after the guy did this presentation, and I told him, I said, look, I'm the guy who's, who called about this and I called because it's for your own protection. And when he saw what the guy had done to his building, he said he doesn't you know, he doesn't blame me for complaining. And I said, you know, this, this affects you. You're in a historic zone. And uh, and a comment I hear a lot, not from this fellow, they were very, very nice about it, but a comment I hear a lot, people say, well, the historic review board's only a, a advisory board. They can only, they only make suggestions. Well, they make suggestions to council. We approve their reports every month. They're not making suggestions to the contract or the property owner. So once council approves that, that's the way it's supposed to get done. And if not, 
it's going to come back on them. Uh, a lot of times people want to change things after the fact. And, and, and the, the hard board has been very good. I've been, I've been in front of them four times in the past year for different projects. And they, they really do a good job. And uh, even our, our newest member, Kim, uh, has really, really did a good job because she was, someone had to recuse himself. So she had to run the meeting. She was really, she really, you can tell she understands it. And, uh, and I take my hat off to, uh, to them, and they're, they're working well with Mr. Dillon and, and the uh, inspectors. So hopefully this continues. And, and we're not, I think, I'm, I feel like Greg, we're not, we're not saying that the, the people aren't doing the right jobs. It's just, I think, where we focus, now that we have more inspectors, can reap more benefits for the borough. And, and I don't want to see, I like the way they do things too. They go out and warn people, they'll hang, they hang a, something on the door to tell people, see, you know, hold it, you gotta do something different here. And I don't want to see people go to the district justice, go to court, but I do want to see them do the right thing. So if somebody can knock on somebody's door and say, hey look, your couch from inside, you got it out to the here and you didn't get it out to the trash and now all of a sudden you, it's your cat's uh, bed just you know, get it out of here. We don't need citations. We just need people to understand that what they're, you know, sometimes they overlook it. Uh, I know I've done it myself. And when it's brought to my attention, then you, you go out and fix, fix what has to be done. So I'm glad to see that we have these new inspectors and, and they're doing a really good job. But I also think we need to, we need to, uh, to upgrade our system on how we handle all this stuff. I, I don't think anybody can be cited without first giving them an opportunity to clean up. Am I right? I think, I think Mar, am I correct? You work in that department. Mm -hmm. So everybody, no matter what the violation is, gets a notice to, yes, depending on if it's a safety issue, if it's something that needs immediate attention, or a high grass, I don't know how many days they give them for grass. It depends on how bad it is. Right, so every, now, once that is ignored, then they get a citation. Now, that citation has to go to district court. By the time there's a quarter, so people start saying, what's taking so long? My neighbor's grass is now two feet high. So then either the borough has to come in and cut it and lean the property, which we have done in the past. Uh, so there's a whole process, but I think that the whole system works. I just think maybe we fell behind because of one inspector and not having the amount of people. We have the secretary sure are capable of getting everything done that has to get done, but we go back to working without a permit again. So what is the process if an inspector goes out and catches me without working for a permit and you tell me to stop working. And I say, okay, and you walk away and I just keep working. And then you come back again and you say, stop working. And I say, okay, and I keep working. What is the process? I mean, you can't arrest me. So what, you know, like me and Louie were talking about this, how do you stop somebody from work, doing the job? We put a stop work order. Okay, I, I ignore it. People ignore it, so we put up another one. And then in time, we will file a citation at the district uh, court. And but in the meantime... But usually we do get cooperation. If in fact somebody has built something without the permit, they may have to rip the walls down and start all over again. Or they'll have to pay double the fees. Each uh, process we try to evaluate. I know. We try to be cooperative with everybody, especially the homeowners. I understand that, but I think our question was, if I am blatantly saying, I'm gonna keep working, the only thing this borough can do is to cite you to take you to court. And that's what we've had to do recently. We can go, we can go to equity, that means going into common pleas, which could be, we've done that before. We can ask the court to impose an equity order where if they don't, if they don't comply, we've got <coughs> 200 
50-day, $50 a day fines for somebody for holding a big tent. Okay? That doesn't happen that often because eventually somebody will come in. But as far as immediately, we can't have a cop go in and do anything. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we can just cite them and we double, we make double fees on them. And most people come around. We do have a couple of people that just don't comply. They just have a hard day. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> I've been trying it. Um, yes, I'd like to um, first thank Maria and the Public Works for constantly being aware of uh, the cleanup, um, and then the town um, people in town. I think it's really important to keep it going. It it we it was a nice kickstart. Um, and the other thing is we really need to start watching for is since Friday to Monday, I see it myself, the uh, now get, get on it before while the ground's still wet, the weeds between the cracks, especially on Mill Street, because once they dry out, forget it. It's, it takes you forever to get it out. But with that said, you, stand, you know, starting that, <clears throat> Mill Street is now in bloom. If you haven't noticed today, uh, raising the bar, uh, did their annual um, hanging of the flowers. They're up, they look beautiful. We have a new source, a new type, a new basket, everything. Um, and I want to just give a shout out to all those that help and have donated with that, uh, especially a shout out to the um, Sunday Stroll. They contributed, so I uh, just wanted to mention that. Um, and to continue it in town, what we're raising the bar is sponsoring or hosting is that on Saturday between 2 and 4 p.m. down at Mill Street Crossing, we will have our annual flower sale that's been on hold because of COVID. Um, it's back. Uh, flats will be $14 and the, the four packs will be $2. There'll be all types of flowers. So uh, keep it in bloom, spread the, the beauty throughout town. Uh, and that'll be again this Saturday at Mill Street Crossing, which is the entrance to Mill Street from two to 4 p.m. It'll be a flower sale. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Betty? Um. I just would like to give my condolences to the Keys family who have lost a daughter um, this past week. Her name was Wanda Keys Daniels, and the Keys family used to live on Woods. I know. And they were longtime residents of Bristol, and the second daughter they lose this year, and it's just heart disheartening. But you know, good people. And I like to remember the people that have been in this town forever. Um, I also want to look into bringing in the chief um, for an award. He's received several awards. He, he sent me so many emails, I got to put it all together. But he's, <laughs> one of his biggest awards was the American Legion Award. I don't know if we're going to do it in June or July. I got to see when he's available. Cause, yes, because his uh, granddaughter is doing really well in softball, and I know he goes everywhere to watch her. So I got to sit down and see when he's going to be available. Um, and I, I, I do understand where Lou and Greg are coming from, um, and I see why, but we definitely have to get back on yearly inspections because um, the residents deserve to rent places in Bristol, and with the money they're paying now, the places need to be decent. And if we let it go, a lot of things happen, and it all falls between the cracks. Um, when you're walking door to door and you're knocking on people's doors and the stories they're telling you, it's horrifying because, you know, if you don't get an inspection yearly, you don't know what's going on. And some of them don't know better than to call, believe it or not, to borrow and complain. So um, that's a big concern for me. Other than that, um, thank you, Maria. Great job. And um, let's keep pushing it. And don't forget, people, please. Just because the street sweeper is coming by, move your cars. 
You may not think you care if you get a ticket, but if you're in front of my house, I care. I want the front of my house cleaned up. So move your cars. That's it. Okay. <laughs> move your cars, Dan. Um, I'll, I'll ask her like, when is the... Uh, okay. Uh, when, uh, when will the streets start being paid? The streets? That's all I talk about right now. All right, so, I don't know if you noticed they did Otter Street. And now I think so Otter and Bath is a separate project. Right, because it's awkward. The roads that we're doing, uh, all the roads, we had a meeting the other day with uh, JDM Morrissey. They're going to start paving our roads right after school lets out because of the kids and the traffic. We just think it'd be better with our busing and parents picking up kids to start the program. Amanda, I don't know if you want to go over the roads, if you want to go to the podium and give us an update, but I know we're going to start in mid-June. That's how we discussed it. We left it the other day at the meeting. Yep, yeah, they, uh, they have us on the schedule tentatively for mid-June. Um, it's really about stuff when the school lets out, which is a little less traffic congestion for the contractor. Um, but we have a list of roads that you want me to just sure. talk about. We have um, Palm Street between Beaver and Monroe. Um, Otter Street is a portion of it was done actually by Aqua already. Mm -hmm. we'll, the contractor will be doing from the bridge at the borough mm -hmm. line on Mill, across Mill uh, Otter Creek to Maple Street. Uh, Mulberry, Lincoln, Pine Grove, Bristol Street, Warren Street Alley, Bridal Path, Plum Street Alley, Pearl Street Alley, the Pond Street Alley, which is near Eagle Lake, uh, Lake Street, and then actually we were able to um, include in the budget the Parkman Street at the Little League Fields on Garden Street. Um, so that would be in the contract as well. So, um, Correct, they do have um, a plan to start mid-June, and there are a few streets that will be paved in addition to those splits by either uh, Pico or Aqua across various projects that they're doing in town, so there'll be a few other streets that will be Right, so when we went out to bid, we had to pull some streets out after that we accepted the bid because of Pico coming in to do some gas work and uh, Aqua coming in to do some pipe work. So them streets were taken out, but like Amanda said, they're going to be done as soon as they're done, a couple of these uh, programs. So I think it made sense to wait until after the kids got out of school. I mean, uh, Frank from Marcy said they don't expect to be, they're going to be doing Bristol Township and the borough. They don't expect to be here more than two weeks. So he said they're going to come right through and get it done in a and a fairly quick uh, pace. They do a lot of paving contracts across the county, so they do work very efficiently, and they kind of plan out their schedule across right. the county. So usually they'll try to kind of start on one side and work their way across the county. Right. Um, so you know, that's the benefit of and you talked to... about the Otter Street section that everybody said, why did they stop there? Because Aqua <coughs> wouldn't go any further. There's 900 and three feet or 902 feet that we're responsible for. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. So um, I, I believe Aqua came all the way up to Bath Street, paved to Maple, um, and so the, the paving contract from um, Morris will actually take it all the way to the borough line, right. uh, to the Otter Street Bridge. Did you say the, the parking lot for the baseball field, that it's the lot at the end of Garden Street? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. And, Garden. and Garden Street. It's Garden Street and the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you yeah. measure it, it's, park, it's the street, too. The street too. Street. It goes, I don't know, Kurt, were you out there when we measured it? I think it goes from right to left all the way to the tracks. I forget it was 200, I don't know if the top I had a couple hundred feet, Amanda. Is there sizes so on there? It's two, we have 215 feet. That probably only covers the parking lot. I don't I think when we wheeled it off, it went to, the, it doesn't go all the way to Jefferson, but it, it squares up that parking lot. I think, yeah, I think so. 
I'm almost sure. We can confirm though. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if not, if it's not, we should really figure that out because it's a little piece. I think we're going to meet out there before they do it, right? Yeah. I think we're going to meet out there. And I do have copies of the borough map with the paving, um, the, the roads that are going to be paved, um, if anybody wants a copy, and also the list, if anyone wants that. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And while you're there, we also received another uh, grant for the from the county community block grant for 420,000 to continue to handicap curb ramps. So the program that's in place now is a previous grant that we're finishing, and we were just awarded another 420,000 to do more ramps. So things are moving along with the ADA ramps, though, at a at a rapid pace. So. The contractor we have working on the ramps now is just about finished up, and they completed 22 or 24 ramps in two weeks. So they've done a great job. Can I ask and, Amanda a question on sure. that note? And, and I apologize if it's not my word, but I bring the kids to school every day. Um, out front of St. Mark's, there's a crosswalk, yeah. and then the handicap ramps are. Uh, next to it, so some of the kids are getting a little confused, and, and the crossing guard is getting a little confused too about whether you should go down the handicap ramp and cross the street or go back to the crosswalk. I don't know if we intend to move those stripes or not. I just think it's good if we just clarify. I don't know if you've noticed that, Chief. Uh, Actually, crossing Radcliffe. Crap, crossing Radcliffe Street. So they put the new ramps in, yeah. but they're next to where the crosswalk it. We can take a look at it. It is a state road, so PennDOT would yeah. um, need to be involved if we would attempt to do yeah. anything. Right. But, yeah, we can certainly they're, they're adapting. It was just at first it was a little bit, you know, so it's not Also, easy. the bus pulls in front of it. Yeah. When the bus comes in, they pull in front of the handicap ramp, mm -hmm. which is odd. You know, it, it shouldn't be like that because kids are going to, that are handicapped, are going to have to go. Take We're also talking to uh, uh, our state senator Steve Sancero and Tina Davis, state rep Tina Davis, about repaving Green Lane. Oh, We're good. trying to get Green Lane paved also. I mean, that so far, that both of them did outstanding with the borough. I mean, mm -hmm. they have stepped up their game and really did a lot for everything we need. Uh, two things, and like Greg said, I hate to get into somebody else's yeah, word, no, but no. the stop signs at Farragut and Monroe, we know it's a nightmare. Yeah. Nobody stops, and even coming the other way. That intersection needs to be looked at because it's very dangerous. But I would like to know if we could put one of them blinking stop signs on Farragut facing if you're coming from Wawa. And if you're coming from Jefferson, if we could put it at the point. So maybe people, because I don't know if they say it. I mean, the other day there was a trash truck, not one of Mascara's, but coming down, they never hit its brakes. If somebody was crossing, they would forget about it. It happens all the time. So, and the cops been out there constant, writing tickets. But as soon as they leave, and I believe it's, it's an issue where it's right against the pole, and I don't think you notice it as much, but maybe it's flashing. Uh, I think it would it would help a lot. Yeah, we can have our traffic if we can look at two of them, maybe Jim, see if. <coughs> and the last thing is uh, Danis's building on Farragut Avenue. What's going on with that? I mean, we got to figure a way to get that place cleaned up. Horrible. Siding's blown off, and I don't know what the hell would happen to that property, but. That's a shame to even use that name because it's not yeah, the, right? it's not their family's fault, but that's how we all uh, they refer to it. it. Left it like that. That's all I have. Amanda, do you have anything else? Anybody have anything for Amanda with the roads? Just uh, with with what Council President DJ Seven was talking about, Kurt might still have. I mean, eight years ago, twelve years ago, we did all kinds of stuff to see what we could do there. So there might be a traffic study already. Yeah. That there's all those out there. I believe there was. I knew that Pete Fate did a traffic study so at one point. Mm -hmm. We talked about when we met with Tina and Steve and Fitz's office, 
on about 13 and they put them yellow back so people were turning that stopped so many accidents I, in my opinion so maybe at that why where the war memorial monument is that has to be run down temporary and put the stop sign right in the middle of Farragut. So you would now make a right if you're going down Monroe. And if you're coming, you're stopping at that stop sign. So it's, it's a way we had you got to try something. We had a mock up of something, right, Kurt? I mean, it was years ago, but yeah. we, we had. We recently did pull them out of our files so we can, we can regroup yeah. them and take a look at the options. Yep. I think there were several uh, iterations there were. of options. Yes. <laughs> Um, I just have a quick question about the intersection right out here where you're, you're heading towards uh, Mill Street, 113, and then you could take, I call it the high road and the low road right here where Burr is. Is there anything, I'm just asking, there's really not a right away, right? It's just you just have to watch out because, do you see what I mean? It's almost like one of the intersections where you're talking about. Right here. Right here. I don't know if there's... Thank God I've never seen anything, but sometimes if you're putting your turn signal on and you have to stop because a car is coming, right. they, you know, you're holding up traffic. I'm That's just another one that should have came forward. Yeah, I'm just curious if there was like, there. maybe we should look at that as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's a problem, but before it does, yeah. Yeah. you know, you know what I mean right out yeah, here? Yeah, Pond Street is a lower yeah. volume <laughs> street, right? Right, right. right. Maybe the long road area. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's really awkward, especially when the school's getting out, because you're like, right. you know, you're, you're putting on your turn signal to go to Pond, but sometimes they read it that you're going to turn here, and they're confused. Both intersections are wide. Yes. Right. And they, it's like passing on Gavin in the city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not ideal intersections. Try saying that for <laughs> All right. Mr. Dolan, yeah. Uh, in terms of the work session agenda, uh, there's a number of items there uh, that will be placed on council's agenda for uh, next week. Uh, uh, one is authorize a resolution to award the refuge contract to solid waste services doing business as JP Mascara for five years or seven years with the two year option. Number three, uh, we have a, uh, authorized a letter at, uh, requesting a 90-day extension uh, in an application that's in your packet. Uh, authorize a resolution to adopt the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection Act 537. Special study for the sale of the Bristol Borough sewer system to the Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority. Uh, the uh, sewer authority recommends the council passes this resolution that you're meeting uh, uh, next week. Uh, this is a requirement. Uh, still today, uh, the borough authority uh, owns the uh, permit uh, and is responsible uh, for the operation of the sewer plant. So it's something we want to get into the hands of Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority as soon as possible. The DEP is the final say on that permit, so uh, uh, that, that'll be on your agenda for next week. I'll come back to uh, discuss the parking meter app. Maybe the mayor can say a few words on that. Uh, the idea would be to have a motion on the agenda for next week, uh, uh, authorizing to proceed with that, assuming council wants to proceed with that. Uh, there's two uh, proposed sales of vacant uh, parcels uh, in the borough, one's on Ray Street and one's on Cedar Street. Uh, I don't know if council wants that on the agenda. Uh, I think we'll just kind of hold off this time uh, because in your packet uh, there's a list of all the other uh, vacant parcels that the borough has uh, that you had asked for at the last meeting. The awkward question is do you want that on the agenda? Or I not? think I six and seven. Yeah, I make a comment. Uh, so it's a two-step process. <clears throat> uh, the parcels have been appraised less than 6000 so they do not have to go out to bid. They do not have to be advertised, but it's a two-step process. If you want to move forward, next Monday you are going to uh, 
agree to the sale, but you are not going to actually adopt the resolution to until the June meeting. Because we have to give 30 days notice that we're doing it. So you're going to vote that you are stating that it's your intent to sell the property, but it can't be done to the following month. The council may not even want to go that far. I understand what I'm saying. Monday night is not to authorize the sale. We may not even put it on the agenda. But I'm saying they're not being asked to authorize the sale. So if the council elects not to sell, so should that be just removed from the agenda right now? Yeah, they don't have no intention of selling. So I think the council's opinion is they're not interested in selling any vacant property. Pardon? I think the council's opinion is they're not interested in selling any vacant property. So we'll just remove them off the agenda. Just be aware, the reason we received these two queries is because at the March meeting it was stated that they were going to consider it. So just two people came up and said they're interested. And they met our conditions, but if you decide not to, I'll just advise them that you're not going to sell. I think council, from the feedback I got, they're not interested at this time selling anything. The only other thing before the discussion on the meter act is to consider authorizing the borough solicitor to attend the zoning hearing board meeting on May 3rd and object to the applications that were submitted. In your packet, there was a memo from me with the two applications and what's being requested of the zoning hearing board. And it's recommended that the council, if you object to these applications, you have the solicitor attend the meeting and present the reasons why those two applications should not be granted. But that doesn't mean that they can't approve these entities. Because we're voicing our opinion doesn't mean the zoning board can do what they want to do. Oh, yeah. Am I correct? It's their decision. It's their decision. It's not council's decision. So does everybody understand? Okay. Go ahead, Jim. So I think I need some direction or the solicitor needs some direction as to whether he should appear at the zoning hearing board. I think he should appear. And object to those two applications. I think he should appear. Because there's some things that they're asking for that we're not sure of or the residents aren't sure of. I don't know how everybody else feels. That's my opinion. Is this an executive session discussion or no? No? Okay. Let the solicitor attend. I think he should attend. Yep. Does everybody go with the solicitor? He's more knowledgeable about what's going on and he'll know how to direct us. Nobody's against him not attending. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Okay. All right. So attend. Okay. Anything else, Jim? No, just the parking app. Ralph, you want to explain anything? Sure. So as discussed over the last couple months, we've been looking into a parking app as an option in addition to our meters. So first and foremost, we want to make it clear that we are not eliminating the meters. We are adding just an additional option for people to pay to park on Mill Street, Rackliff, and some other various areas in town. So after a lot of research and consideration, chief was involved, his staff was involved. We had a couple calls with Passport Parking App. I'm recommending that the council adopt the Passport Parking App as an option in town for residents and visitors on Mill Street and other areas to utilize it instead of just paying for or using the meters and quarters. And the way it works, just to give you a real quick synopsis, is that each block will be technically signed. There will be signage. There will be signage on the meters. And each block will have a zone. And when people download the Passport Parking App, they literally can just pay with their credit card. The huge benefits of this for the borough is that, you know, if somebody's 
parking in a specific spot the way it works now with the meter is you pay for the spot with the app you're paying for your vehicle mm -hmm. so if someone's you know parked in front of a business and pulls out and someone else pulls in financially the borough is going to benefit because they're not looking at a meter they're seeing the meters expired and they're paying you know double for that spot the other benefits are for residents and visitors is that if you're on the 100 block of Mill Street and you park and you're visiting some businesses or you're grabbing a drink or eating somewhere, you'll get notification on your phone that your time's expiring and you can just pay on your phone. You don't have to go run three or four blocks to put money in the meter. And then, you know, there's even some back end benefits for us in terms of bookkeeping, reporting, things of that nature. It integrates well with what we're already doing. There's even a feature where like the people on Ratcliffe Street that have permit parking, we could register their license plates to those specific zones so that we don't have to issue stickers anymore. So, you know, I'm recommending the council, this is an all-inclusive app. There's a lot of apps out there. We received a lot of phone calls and a lot of inquiries, and I've talked to a lot of salespeople, you know, who are trying to pitch their app. But this seems to be the most streamlined company and the one that will most integrate with what we're already doing. So next week, I'm recommending we adopt this, you know, and pass this so that over the next couple of weeks before the summer really kicks in, we could have everything up and running. I think it's great because we do have some issues with the meters themselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Work. Yeah, they don't work. So I think it's a perfect. Place. So I think that the biggest benefit was. I said in a few of these meetings that some of these people that don't know how to use their phone, which I'm one of them, the app and all this stuff, I want to put quarters in. Like I went to Doylestown the other day to file for a permit, and it cost me a dollar fifty because it's ten cents for 25, 25 cents for ten minutes. So I think that is a benefit here because. The people going in Dr. Manarino's office or somewhere can still use quarters. The other benefit is if somebody's in each reading or somewhere, they don't have to rush out and say, let me go put another dollar in the meter. They could just do it from their phone or the owner could have it on their phone and the owner can say, I'm going to, your time's running out and he has right. the parking thing on his phone. Right. So there's so many different benefits for this. I don't understand it all, nor do I want to understand it, but I think you. a lot of these <laughs> younger people it. are going to. My kids do that too. And I know you talked about it before. Yeah. So, it. Yeah. and the other thing is, and I've been working on most Street, I've been working at Greg's for months, that contractors that are working there, instead of running out, trying to put a bag or unloading things, can get a temporary put your tag in temporary for that job and say, I got three days, I'm working in E-Tree. So the parking meter, not that you, when you're doing contracting work, you need to get tools out of your truck. So you're not just parked there, you're in and out of your truck all day long. So there's a lot of benefits to this, they understand it. But I think in the long run, everybody's gonna be happy. There is a fee associated with it, but it's the price of parking. I mean, look at New Hope, no matter where you go, you pay to park. It's insane now. Yes. Yeah. It is. So, yep. And I think we give Jim, if we pass this next month, we give Jim and the mayor and Joe and everybody involved in this, the solicitor, to look at these contracts and give them the, the opportunity to sign these agreements and then move forward. I don't know how long it's going to take to implement them, but. Any questions on the meters? No. Next week's agenda. Anything else, Jim? Do you have anything? Anybody else have it? Lily? Pardon me? I guess next Thursday is the meeting.